is Zero. The Blue Terran from Team Envy, he is Maru. Third command center, super early. Yeah, he did an SCV scout early to be safe, but other than that, Maru's done such a greedy opening. And he's gone for the very quick second barracks. So he's going to go for Hellion, swap the factory off. We're then going to see that factory prepare a reactor for the starport. Essentially, you're going to see the double medevac marine drop across with Stim pressuring while having a third command center already loading up with SCVs. Now, for Serral, the real problem is you've delayed your third base to get this overlord speed. You've got information of what's coming, but you have slowed down your start. So you're going to have to really execute these next few minutes just right in order to deflect not just these Hellions poking around, but the very early double Marine drop that's going to be incoming. Zerglings are going to run into Hellbats. They're going to get <laughs> annihilated. You need to get rid of the Hellbats completely for this to work for Serral. I do actually wonder if Maro is going to have to be uh, thinking of an alternative way to use this, right? Because it was scouted, going head first might not be the best call. He's, of course, going to test test the waters first, decides actually it is worth doing. Just Queen so far defending Lings oh. do come to help out. Bane Lings looking for those connections do get into that heart of the Hellbat army. And that Marine squad will actually reduce down to a single medevac is forced to get out of there. And that was, I mean, was that a flawless defense? That was pretty darn good from Cyril. That was absolutely delicious. That was a, a piece of finish finesse that we rarely get to see. Defending it while getting an SCV or two on the third, damaging the command center a lot and just shutting that down. I mean, I thought that one Hellbat in the back might do a lot of damage, but we saw basically Serral shut it down. And guess what? Double Evo's on the way. He's got Hydrogen on the way. His fourth base seems to be established. Now, Maru's not done yet. He's going to use even just a handful of Marines, gets an Overlord, gets a few Creep Tumors, and he is into the tank production, has a massive upgrade lead behind this, does Maru. However, with the fourth base coming in, the tech already into the Hydra's and the very flexible Baneling drops queuing up. It feels like this could run away from Maru very quickly. He's going to have to handle this next minute or so really well, or Serral's just going to be all over him. Yeah, I do think that one thing is absolutely crucial about Maru's attack there. It wasn't that it necessarily failed, that it didn't do a whole lot of damage or catch Serral that by surprise. It's that while we do see that sometimes not do a whole lot, usually you have two medevacs left over. So you still have 16 Marines. You can still run around, maybe have combat shields finally finish and actually find other places to tackle. But by losing the majority of his army, he's really Really lost any sense of pressure that Serral had to feel to defend. So that one medevac drop, we saw it try and do something. It didn't really do a whole lot. Serral really getting to basically line up everything like he would want, including some aggression and the defense. Even having these Lings and Banelings out on the field seems so dangerous to do. If he had caught Maru by surprise, though, it would have been another victory under his belt. Baneling drops going in right now. There we go. Maru does not react in time. And that's going to... Oh, no! no he didn't kill it! Do it! Do it! Serral with the uncharacteristic mistake here. <laughs> He's just standing there. Oh and you know God. what? It might kind of work in his favor because Maru might think it's a fake, but Maru, he had like 30 seconds and he didn't oh notice it. And the fourth command to get sniped. This is massive Ling Bane in the third base. It's already on fire. SCV's evacuating. So many have gone down. Maru has set up an amazing siege location below the third here of Serral. But Serral's queen's very tanky and he's done so much damage to Maru's economy. This is absolutely insane. In the blink of an eye, Maru has lost so much, including even more momentum when he didn't really Whoa. have any. Now he's going to be completely surrounded. The tanks try last second to target down those Banelings, and they do a decent job of that. Some Marines do end up living. One tank, no, no tanks will end up living after that successful cleanup. Serral holds on the back end and does a tremendous amount of damage on Maru's side of the map. He maxed out Hive, 2-2 about the finish. He's cleaned up the drops. What is he going to do now? Methodically just cleaning up the map there and controlling it, and you can see that red base spread, the creep now getting past the halfway, the gold is fully mining. Maru does have his own gold up, but Serral is max. And this is Serral's time to start trading. A good Widow Mine does take out some Banelings. If Serral collapses on that planetary right now, though, I do not think there's any way Maru has the numbers to defend. There is a bit of urgency, though, because every second that goes by, Maru's catching up in supply. Whoa. Serral's got to make this happen soon. Okay, that was just a misclick. I thought that was going to be the biggest run by. Secret run by ever, uh, but not so. It is being set up, but it's also being scanned. Uh, yeah, so Serral maybe has a little bit of a clock that he can be worried about, knowing that if he lets one thing go, then suddenly another thing lets go, and suddenly you are playing super late game against Maru, which no one really wants to do. And to Maru's credit, 
but he is actually trying his best to take the fight a little bit past the point of the last defense. However, it's already here. The last oh. defense being the planetary. It's totally unprotected. Just the Widow Mines really off to the right side, which could not actually stop the full force of Serral's army. Bye-bye, planetary, and perhaps bye-bye, oh. army. That is so close. He does get the hatchery, lifts up three medivacs worth of units. And Maru, yeah, he lost the command center. He evacuated the SCVs out of the south. He gets the gold base snipe behind it. And this is Maru at this point. He's not taking risks. A lot of Terran players go, oh, they're attacking the gold. What do they do? F2, stim, A move out into the open. That's where Serral wants you to come. Maru is not going to move down this ramp. He'll, he'll move out small squads, but he's got tanks and widow mines layered backwards up on the high ground. He says, look, if you want to chase up this ramp, you're going to take a terrible engagement, Serral. I'm just going to try and slowly re-expand, keep popping down more command centers, and drain you out using my efficiency. Serral, though, he's been very calculated so far, doesn't want to chase too far into that. Yeah, I'm not sure he wants to go too much more. He doesn't actually know what's up that ramp. He's about to find out, though. More tanks shelling away. More, oh, well, SCVs actually, Ooh. unfortunately, dying as they continue to be on that rally. <laughs> but Mara was going to have some reinforcements, so Serral does have to acknowledge that maybe he can't go ahead and go too far forward. He pulls back, still handling the triple medevac drop. I do love that timing of what Pig was saying, actually, where Mara probably couldn't actually go forward too much with his army. And I think he just basically did. He went a little <laughs> bit too forward, and Serral was able to pounce on it. So Mara loses that chance of actually getting max out once again just that's one of his goals is actually complete that 200 200 which is so difficult to do when you are affording some late late game technology like ghosts and hell even marauders at this point a little expensive for maru you know the other day when Raynor was ahead he came out swinging but serral a more methodical player slower calmer and he's looking to just deny bases comes in forces the lift on the gold and zerglings do find that base on the bottom as well serral applying pressure but the Viper's there. They do need to get in range of those tanks. Got to start abducting those Zerglings. Find oh, another oh, undefended oh, mineral line. Oh, this is so painful for Maru. He cannot afford to lose these workers right now. No, he cannot. I mean, he is uh, still with a healthy army supply. If we check that second number to the right, um, it's not so bad looking right, but the situation doesn't really allow him to do very much with it. Serral has him under his thumb. If Maru does try to push out, he's running into lurkers. He's running onto creep. He's running onto the banelings. If he doesn't push out, then Serral has all the freedom in the world to actually size up and go, okay, left side, right side, middle side, doesn't really matter. He can go wherever he wants, and including in the back, Nidus Swarm is coming down. Serral basically opening up all the options to mm. actually kill Maru. And he's doing a great job of it. At this point, I can feel Maru getting constricted. I mean, it's amazing. He's constantly got a new command center to put down. He's got more Widow Mines. He's got ghosts coming out somehow but the bank is there for Serral. And Serral, so patient and calm, he's got the Nidus Worm, which he's gonna try and launch into the back of maybe the natural or the main as his next attack goes down. And this bottom orbital, it just looks so exposed out there. Now, not a lot of support for the Lurkers, so that's actually a yeah. bit of a poor maneuver, but that's a big army. Big Widow Mine hits, is it big enough though? A Blinding Cloud goes down, the Lingbane Hydra starting to crash on through. The Planetary is not quite up on the gold just yet. That's a lot of exposed SCVs! Oh no, the SCVs are gonna go down. The last second cancel, the Planetary and leave sa saves the command center, but eight SCVs go down in a game where Mara was not allowed to actually make any more mistakes. Unfortunately, mistake after mistake, again, only holding on because he is Maru. But at this point, Serral really has to be the one to make the biggest mistake of his gaming career and actually let Maru back into this. The income advantage, absolutely insane at this point. Serral, he's going to accrue a bank and also be just replacing army after army. Oh, no, not again, not again, not again. Maru's work is exposed. He <laughs> sees it, but what can he do? There's no units to defend. And look at that, an insulting burrow on the mineral line and even gets three more SCVs and a big Ling run by comes in. Oh, my Lord, the adrenal gland circling's getting the wraparound, even an overseer to spot the ghosts and take them out. Serral is so well prepared at every turn. And this is why you cannot give this Finnish freak at an advantage. He will use it so darned well. And it's just, it does not look fair at this point. Serral is everywhere. And Maru, this is his last real army. But there's a baneling for every single soldier he's got. Yeah, everything's gonna go down to the banelings. The ghosts actually end up living just because Maru taps out.
Yeah, mass lings on the way. Bainley now second gas is mining off just 20 workers. This is completely all in. Now, he's okay to show 10 Zerglings or so. Try to get rid of the Reapers and get rid of the map vision. Does not want to show that he's continuing to produce too many Zerglings, though. And notice how he hides oh. the other Zerglings behind. He doesn't want to show these. This day just wow. outside of vision, but the Reaper... Uh oh The Reaper does see those Zerglings. Maru immediately evacuating. It's a Depot wall of Zombie Grub. Oh. That is so bustable. He doesn't even care. He does it in his face. He says, you've been building Reapers. They're all dead. Dead. What are you going to do to defend this, Maru? Oh, this is so decisive from yeah. Cyril. And yeah. he's just identified the weak point. Look at this. He's trying to wall off at the command center and engineering base. Oh, I no. think there's still a hole. Oh. It's open. It's open. He's going to be too late. The command center's not going to land. The main legs bust on through. Just a handful of Marines to actually stop this. This would be the best micro in the world. Already a couple Baneling snipes trying to save Maru's life here in game number two, but it's not worked. More links, more Baneling's just drive on through. 15 SCVs already killed. Oh. And there's another zap out. Cyril takes a 2-0 lead. Maru opening up with the Marine Hellion Medivac build with a... We did see a little bit of in his best of three. And he added a battle cruiser as well. I wonder if he's going to do the exact same thing here. If he does, it'll be scouted. But he's got a very quick third command center, and we are going to be seeing the mech transition. Yeah. It's time to sink into a solid mid game and get back to a different sort of game. It hasn't been working so far for Maru playing bio and these pressure openings that have been shut down. He's going to slow it right down and just go for that late game that he is such a god at. We know that Maru has been practicing with this build. He's insistent on using it, even when it might even be obvious that it's going to be scouted. And as you were saying, it just as a way of actually having multiple forms of pressure. And that's why it's a nice opener. And it actually doesn't necessarily have a weakness with Hellings being pumped out. No Ling run by us to actually stop it. Battlecruiser's going to pick up maybe two queen kills. Maybe a little shy on that. Ooh. Actually, good pullbacks there from Cyril. So just going after the drones and then tuck it into a corner and wait for its teleport to be off cooldown. But Roach Tech is on the way. Infestation pit is already finished. So I believe Cyril is going to be looking to play kind of like Ravager Baneling to deal with the ground, Mutas to deal with the air. And keep in mind, right now, there's not a lot of siege tanks. And against Ravager Baneling, you definitely want to add a whole bunch of siege tanks at some point. Just Mass Cyclone, a very fragile composition. Especially when it doesn't have any room to micro. If it's actually just defensively placed, it's going to run out of room real quick and then just be destroyed. So, oh, certainly worth considering. We actually have some oh. Swarm Host being added as well. I'm not mistaken, Swarm Host actually, swarm host actually legit. Oh! That was kind of close. That <laughs> battle cruiser teleported out of there with like seven, 17 hit points. Two or three Mutalist shots would have taken that down really. Uh, playing with fire there was Maru. Those battle cruisers, they are such a long-term efficiency unit. Completely just deletes the point of building them in the first place if you're going to lose them. You have to keep them alive for a long time so they can get value hmm. and slowly drain the Zerga resources. Serral coming in with a whole big pack of Mutalisks down here. Does take out that Widow Mine. But essentially, I mean, you've got obviously infinite value in terms of the Swarm host. They throw free units out. The Banelings are very supply efficient, but very cost inefficient themselves. So it's really about just trying to open up an imbalance in the composition of Maru. If he ends up on all the Thors, Banelings can run right past them into the worker lines. If he's got too many tanks, he doesn't have enough things to cover the battle cruisers and the Mutas can reign supreme. So Serral's going to be trying to catch Maru off here, get him off balance. No Centaur over the right side, but there is Planetary and a tank. Usually oh. very good at dealing with Banelings, but not necessarily in this number. Again, the Planetary does fall. The tank, barely not so, but the Midas come in. Might go ahead and grab it, or actually a bit more focused on evacuating from those battle cruisers. They're trying to chase them down. Maru, I believe, added up to four battle cruisers, but they're all together, and they're terrible actually chasing the Mutas. Most mech units are terrible at chasing Mutas. Finally, Yamato gets thrown down to try and guarantee that kill before Serral escapes, but at the end of the day, Maru is able to replant his fourth very quickly. There was a command center right next to it, so he is still effectively on five bases. Yes, he lost 25 SCVs, but he already had a lot, and he still has so many command centers that every cycle of SCVs is actually surprisingly fast that he rebuilds them. Yeah, and because he's got the fourth base back up and a fifth with a planetary, it really feels like Maru is, is re-expanding and out-expanding faster than Serral can do damage to him. And because, like you said, cost inefficiency, look at this, Banelings are rolling into what? Tanks and Thors. They're taking some of them out, but some for what? Dozens of Banelings. That is not cost efficient at all. Let's take a look at the units lost tab as these muters continue to trade on in here. And you can see those numbers in the top left are quite far in the favor of the Terran player. The muters, though, finding a mineral line, and that's very important to slow down Maru's growth.
The bad is our number has gotten surprisingly high. A lot of the time in the past, we stopped at three. Then a fourth started being added, but we even have a fifth. There's the micro on the weak battle cruiser. You're definitely not going to let that one go. And the planetary is saved thanks to the Thors. But, you know, those mutas, they were in big numbers. They do have plus two, so they are a threat to a lot of different things. Locusts are Whoa. targeted on top of the tanks. So that's going to be a nasty loss for Maru. The Hellbats can try and stop it. In fact, they did actually save at least one or two tanks. So well done to them. It is still about that trading. Maru so far doing the job. We expected him the last few games, getting to the late game and then just holding strong, waiting until his army perhaps was the superior one, especially as we get closer to 3-3 mech. One of the players we know is an expert of methodical late game, but he's not going to let him there for free either. We'll see what happens if Maru can survive that long, but that is a big if. The Ravagers, the Corruptors, Bailing coming in from behind, trying to launch Biles on top. Great dodges by Maru. And the Battle Cruisers are going to be able to survive yet another fight being guarded by, I mean, the help of the Raven, the help of the Thors, and then I think also some of them are having teleport back online. So Serral knows he does not want to over-dedicate, especially when the Zerg doesn't have a huge bank. If you don't have basically that backup button, the oh no, I overexerted myself, then you could have the mech player say, I think you overexerted yourself. I think I can go across the map. Now, Maru might not actually make that decision even given an opportunity because he does want that perfect number of ghosts above 10, really. And he's even going to get upgrades on them, right? But he is ultimately getting to a very, very scary late game army. One planetary is going to fall by the looks of things. Serral having a distraction in the main base opens up the right side of the map. Now, Maru going to give that up, accept the feat basically on that side and kind of only lose the command center, right? And then otherwise, two SCVs, not a big deal. Got 14 more where those came from, Zombie Grub. My yeah. name's Maru, <laughs> and I always have extra command centers. You know, there's a lot of players who are like, look, I have four bases and that's it. And if the fourth goes down, well, by golly, I'm not mining off it for at least two minutes. And it's basically a death sentence, not for Maru. Maru has extra orbitals, extra command centers, but his supply, even though it's close to max, he is starting to take a lot of losses. And it's something where he's had these moments, right? But the battle cruisers, I think, need to be a little more active, making sure he's getting those that the tax out of Serral. Yamato, a bunch of corruptors, teleport home. Drive through, get some drones, teleport home. These sort of moves, especially if the corruptors are out of position, he could even take out a base. Makes it a little bit more tit for tat instead of just being, okay, I hope I can defend and defend perfectly. Oh. One battle cruiser does go down as he wanted to go ahead and delete that hatchery off the face of this map. The Hellbats actually pushing away with the help of the ghosts, of course. That's far more what they're scared of. Ravagers force to disengage, but they do find it another kind of mini opening there. SCVs have gone down. A couple tanks went down. But Maro still holds on five bases. Serral now again maxed out, getting his own upgrades, opening up the options for technology. I did notice that Greater Spire finishing, right? Yeah. Uh, but doesn't maybe have you know, truly the safest economy, I suppose. Not a humongous bank, not 10,000, 10,000. We might eventually get there and hell, we might even see eventually as the map continues to be mined out, we might see that Broodlord transition kind of at that point where everything is kind of centralized mm. into one push versus one push because there's only two bases on the map, right? But not quite yet. There's actually a little game to play here. But you know what that game includes now? Infestors, fungling the ghost, taking them out of the equation could be big. Or Neural Parasite, hold the battle cruisers in place and drop the mass bile on them. With this Ravage account, that could be deadly. And I love this, just biling down those turrets, taking down anything that's exposed on the front. And I mean, we keep looking at that and saying, you know, sub 80 drones this late into the game. That's why there's not been a giant bang for several. But we've got to remember there is swarm hosts yeah. and they chew up a lot of supply and they also get insane value over time other than the time they got caught by the battle cruisers. So they are actually giving so much value. I almost think of Serral's economy as like a 90 drone economy just because of the value the locusts are giving. But uh, definitely doesn't feel confident going into like Broodlords just yet. He's still looking to trade with the Ravager Ling Bane and the Swarm Host. It feels like though now with these sensor towers locking down the map, it's slowing down. There's a great ghost count. It's very scary. Serral's looking for the fights, but that's a huge Terran army. And that might actually be too huge of a Terran army. Well, hold on here. Got a little bit smaller with the Thors being your old parasited ghost. Do start to get those snipes down. Well, the corrosive Biles did rain from above. Apparently it was not enough, but hello, the Thors. They do help to take down a Brethren. The Battlecruiser falls, but the Thors finally let go of the Zerg dominance. And Maru still holds on to a supply lead, continuing to move across the map. 
Right now, Serral's biggest opponent is his supply count. He cannot get above 200 supply, and all he's making is roaches. Banelings still needs corruptors. Now, the battle cruisers have fallen a few of them. I think two in this game. There's still three left. That's still a problem. If Serral can clear those battle cruisers, this becomes a simpler equation because he can get those corruptors off his roster. They are wasting supply right now. He would love to have more lings, more banes, get the broodlords out, swap into something that can swamp over this ground army. So Serral right Right now he's very much struggling with that and maru look at his handling no nidus worm in the main no 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 maru has played thousands of games against rogue he doesn't oh. let that happen oh okay goodbye 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 <laughs> no, goodbye that last one most is dead now the swarm hosts are actually gone the supply does free up for Serral, but what is he going to replace it with answers uh, going to be coming oh. very soon. The attack off to the right side, a little bit more important right now as Sarah realizes there is an opening. No oh. ghost, no battle cruisers. Planter is going to fall. Another one is canceled. The orbital in the air does also fall to those corruptors and plenty of SCVs as well, but ditto on the left side of the map. Maru looking not just for one or two bases, but perhaps even more. These two bases, when he's currently attacking, they might already be gone as those drones might be gone as again if there's Hellions in the mix, but then over you know, what else? Run. He can actually continue going forward. If he actually gets this launching pad up, Serral is going to have his fourth base already under attack, and that's truly scary. Oh, those drones at the top just got AFK'd. Uh oh, he does catch the battle cruisers though. This is a huge win for Serral. Finally removes the scourge of the battle oh, cruisers no. from the map, and that means he can morph Broodlords, but he's lost 20 drones a little unnecessarily there. That one hero held back got about 15 of those. Does lose two bases mining on the left side. Serral has a little bit of a bank, Ooh. but his income has been massively hit as he... Uh, Wow. Oh, 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 four drones going down. <laughs> oh, those drones really don't know what to do in their life, do they? Um, well, 32 of them now have gone down. Serral does not have much of a bank as he did finally decide to go for those Broodlords. But here's the thing, whereas the Rainer push with Broodlords was a bit of a surprise, kind of just like mentally and literally, there was not enough on the ground to counter them. In this case, Maru's mass ghost composition, the fact that he actually has 17 ghosts is really a big difference maker. That actually gives him a very good option against Broodlords as long as they're not fungled, right? Right? So that's going to be the yeah. next dynamic that we're looking for. Can Morrow track those Broodlords, track those Infestors? And for Serral, can he actually basically use the Broodlords well enough, effectively enough, to start actually kind of pushing into Morrow's economy, starting to take down some bases? This is all about the fungal up against the ghosts and whether or not they can land snipes. Right now, one secret agent underground watching those units on the right side. Those Burrow Infestors, very dangerous. The Lings find this left side base, which remember was never a planetary, but I love that. The repair, the Hellbat, holds onto the base. Very well defended by Maru and he's re-establishing control over the bottom right. Maru desperately needs to get this base up as well. If he can get both of those up, his income's going to be soaring. Oh, the EP! Oh! oh, the plays are pretty good. We have seen some other Zergs do that, but about 70% of those ghosts, maybe even more, without energy now. That's what's going to start the ball rolling. Serral is going to try and push for it. Remember that he can also be EMP'd, obviously. He just neuroparasited that, so he has to be careful with his own infestors. He wants the fungal, maybe even some more neuroparasites on other important units, but the brutal attack has commenced. Well, apparently the counter to Maru's late game is you steal his ghosts and you use them against themselves. Serral <laughs> using some stylish plays in the midst of an action-packed game. 24 minutes in, Maru shoving down the right side with a small force of tanks and hellbats. That's a very expendable army. Saves the Thor, pulls at home. Another tank hellbat fo hell force down the left. Maru, I believe at this point, he wants more Thors and a few more Vikings in the mix. So he's trying to trade off some of the tanks, pull Serral home, damage his economy at the same time. And I, I think he's actually surprised that he's getting so much damage done. Serral is, is out of money right now. He hasn't rebuilt this other base. That one's going to fall. And oh my lord, this actually just could be a winning move just splits the army up says hey you've just invested in broodlord and fester that's not very mobile i am just gonna blast your economy I'm gonna be honest when it was pretty much only the ghosts that were the dependable anti-air and the thor count was still very low it was like well again one photo could really change things right but now that we also have thors being added and hellbats being traded but very easily replaced we are getting to that kind of perfect late game pro uh, mech army rather against broodlords if it's just the broodlords in on the action they're not really that great the broodlings get uh, destroyed by the blue flame hellbats and the Thors go to town, but it's all about the spellcasters right now. And speaking of the ghosts on kind of the wrong 
side of the party are going to return home to try and defend the right side. Cyril is basically all in with this, guys. He does have a hatchery coming back up, but his economy has been busted. He knows that this is one of his last armies, and he has to use it super effectively. He's got to make sure those infestors spread out and don't get EMP'd, because I, I really think Ooh. Maru might even... Oh, great fungal. You can't get out of there if you chain fungal. One of the infestors does go down. Another one. Great target fire. Those tanks, yes, they fall, but he gets rid of some of the infestors and Cyril. He's only got one left. That's two fungal growths to stop 17 ghosts from spamming snipe on his army. This is less than ideal. Cyril may be evicting Maru from his mining bases, but Maru's up 14 army supply and he's eight. Thors, three Vikings, 17 ghosts. That is a broodlord killing army if I've ever seen one. Exactly. And while Maru is also lacking any type of gas bank at this point, the Hellbats are actually what he would need and still very useful as units go. They can help defend the Thors, they can turn into Hellions and actually continue just roasty toasting up all of the rest of Cyril's drones. Not that's really going to add very much effectively, as I said, Cyril already all in. He is going to pull back and clean things up as right now it's about his production and his technology that is being destroyed. The high actually this is oh exactly the infestor pops out the fungal with the burrow and then the scan they both knew how important the spellcaster was that was that was quite tricky that's so sick like like for anyone who's maybe a newer viewer to quickly target the infestor with two tanks which anyone else would have just assumed were dead and stop microing but then for several to instantly borrow and Maru to react with the scan. These are the details that come in when you're looking at potential new world champions. The Infestor burrowing behind. Ravage is going to get sniped. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Serral taking an awful fight there. The ghost catching the edge of him. He's got to get out of here. He's got to evacuate this situation. The ghosts are just hammering his broodlords. The Thors and the Vikings going ham. And Maru smashing Serral out of that game. This game. Sling actually gets in. That's a... Uh... Probably wasn't on purpose. <laughs> That's going to get an entirely full scout, too. So it even sees kind of the lack of anything back there, right? Which would always be in question otherwise. Indeed. And this looks more like it might. I mean, it could go mech, could go bio. You don't really know as Serral, but you see no add on on the starport. And that means, guess what? You get to skip on the spore crawlers, be nice and greedy. And uh, it's just Hellions and, and kind of, you know, okay, it could be a Viking, could be a Lib, could be a Medivac. Nothing too crazy, and wow, Stim does start up there for Maru, so he's going to go back to bioplay here on the small map. That could be scary, but Maru is, is as I was pointing out, about to be on Medivac, so that's going to be the Hellions plus the double drops. The double drops do have a lot more potential. They can harass, they can kill creep tumors, yes, but they can actually kill entire drone lines or building hatcheries, so that's usually where we see that kind of ramp up of multitasking from the Terran. Serral right now already has... 15 workers on his fourth base. That's a full mineral line. He's got a fifth base coming up as well. It's a five gas style. Tells us we think he's going to be going lurkers from here. Could play hydras, but very likely to go straight for the hive and the lurkers off Massling Bane. And to have so many workers up at such an early stage, he's got tons of queens. The, the creep is out there. The Link Bane count is growing. He does need to connect that creep uh, from the main base with the creep tumors. But for now, it feels like uh, he's, he's just super well set up as the hydralist den does go down. And Maru. It's not like these Hellions are getting in there and causing a ruckus. They are literally just slowing down this relentless creep spread. They aren't stalling it out completely. They are slowing it down, and it's only very momentarily. Very momentarily. In this case, I guess the Queen's starting to find it very hard to be on both the left and the right as the map continues to expand outwards, but they're getting the job, job done eventually. And there we have it, exactly that. Creep Timmer's on the way, again encroaching on Maru's third base. Always feels so suffocating when the Terran sees that, sees what is probably Queen's, hopefully Queen's right there, spreading queen Creep. The uh, second factory is on the way, but perhaps notably that armory for 2-2. Two, two, pretty darn late. 1-1 one, one has been done for Maru, so Serral will absolutely be able to catch up in those upgrades. Yeah. Now we are heading into that very late stage. As Serral opens up the hive, gets the lurker den, even adds on that burrow. Again, the upgrades having gotten closer thanks to Maru's little mistake there. So eventually, Ooh. okay, well, does lose control over that right side. How about the left? Does pick up at least there. That creep is getting awfully close. Maru is not happy about this. He feels a little bit of urgency, and at the same time, he knows there's nothing he can do. He cannot get urgent. He cannot move out. He's got to stay behind his walls. He's got to keep his tank layers back and only branch forward with these small little drops. Of course, as Serral hits Hive, I expect Vipers and Lurkers to come in. And once he has Vipers, well, these are going to get yoinked. These medivacs are start going to get abducted. Tanks will start getting abducted. And that's when big lurker swing-ins can come. But oh, hold that thought. Lings get on the tanks. Banelings go after the planetary. Goodbye, fourth base and fifth command center. That is a lovely trade for the Finn. Yeah, exactly. 
both command centers falling, that SCV was like awkwardly left without a command center. Oh. Like, I guess I'll rebuild another one. But unfortunately, the Lings were still there, and that might have also not been a cancel. So a big loss of minerals for Maru. Now it was one command center, one planetary, so that's at least the last second cancel on this one. But then the Burrow, oh. Kiki Burrow, to actually continue denying Maru's economy. Maru, you know, there's not been necessarily that many trades, and those Marines did die right. But it still is expensive for Maru to get into Go. Still expensive for him to replace some of those tanks. He does need not just that army that I was talking about. He also does need these planetaries up to have a fallback point in case the Ling Bailing gets overwhelming. Yeah, he's building one in between. Out front is natural. That's going to be a planetary to anchor his central position. And it's all going to be about spreading out tanks and moving around with a mobile squad of ghosts and bio to kind of respond to where the threat comes from. And Maru, he's so good at turtling on this map here on Berlin Grad. He's done it before. And if it was anyone else, I'd say they're getting strangled out of this game because Serral's got so much map control. But it's Maru, and there is such a fear in any Zerg player's mind. Serral, it looked like he had momentum in the last game, was not able to finish it. You do not want to let this absolute beast of a Terran player get up to mass ghost. And that's why it's important that Serral keep finding ways to get in there and deny these bases. Once again, an amazing income difference. Serral is going to be rolling in cash, even as he rolls Banelings into Planetary. So that's what's really scary for the Terran. We do have a little Sim, Sim, Sim City, but it's not really enough. Not with the bio being a little out of place. The Vipers come in, cast the blinding clouds on top of the tanks, and Maru is continuing to have to pull back here. Serral just rolling on in, literally, with the Banelings, realizing there's nothing actually oh. to stop me. The Hellbats try their best, but the Ghosts are now under fire. Suddenly, Maru has been basically broken. He's down 70 supply. All it took was having an undefended right side base for far too long. Long, and it looks like Morrow might actually be tapping out of game four. Oh, several there with a fantastic play. And Maru reaching for too much at once. He went to the bottom left and the top right. He said, let's take a fourth and a fifth base at the same time. But that meant moving out of sensor tower range. And it, all it took was that moment of Cyril getting in there, dropping the blinding clouds across the tanks. And the ghosts were too slow to scramble over and respond. And Maru's whole style, it, it relies on him knowing where the attack's coming from so he can move that mobile squad. Now, check this out. Serral says, oh, you've got an exposed base down here. All right, I'll make another wave of Banelings and smash into this one. And when Maru moves to defend that, we expect Serral to rotate in on that top side. Once again, hit from there. <laughs> Massive bailing numbers. What the hell, oh Zombie Oh my Grub? god, there's nothing to stop them. These tanks actually look like they just aren't here anyways. The Banelings roll on through. Serral doesn't just want a victory, apparently. He wants to humiliate Maru in the last game, going after the... Oh, the pop out of the SCVs was so sick. Oh, Oh my gosh, that was actually really well done. Maru, again, not going to give up anytime soon on Berlingrad. Oh, creep spread in his other fourth base, though. And Serral here. I mean, this is Serral saying, OK, you might be the king of late game. Guess what? You let me dominate the mid game. I will, I will drown you in Zerg. I will create a tsunami of Zerg, oceans upon oceans. And this is why you as the Terran player need to put some pressure on. You cannot just sit in your corner of the map and give me the map because look at what I've done to it. I have turned this into my playground. He's literally laid carpet across the entire map. He set up Zerg furnishings inside Maru's base. He's running in and making a playground of it from all sides. And he's just able to replenish at ease. Such a ridiculous amount of money. And I tell you, when we get another shot of that army when it comes in with the next attack it's going to be disgusting because that's another wow. round of far too many banelings oh so many banelings coming in and the queen's actually taking some of that tank fire this is the last stand of maru can he once again do it it's not looking likely the tanks are so desperately oh. trying to take care of their ghost buddies it's not gonna work Serral takes the 3-1 victory and moves forward in iem katavica what a performance there it looked like it may be a quick dominating one.